So we should be going live uh, right at 10 o'clock on both uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube. So well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, Blessed Trinity. We're here in our uh, San Diego State Chapel uh, in uh, San, Di San Diego area, and we have uh, folks tuning in on Facebook and YouTube and uh, Zoom. Uh, if you need the Zoom connection, uh, you can always uh, private message me, uh, Blessed Trinity Church at cox.net is my email. So, uh, so welcome. This is the 14th Sunday after Trinity. And uh, it's a pleasure to have you here with us. We're in the Book of Common Prayer. And as you may know, the Book of Common Prayer has the Bible arranged for praying together. And so you'll find the English Standard Version is the version that we use, the 2011 version, and our service will begin on page 106, page 106. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now, now and, and always. always. Amen. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Bring up our prayer for this week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Prayer is found on page 92. Almighty and eternal God, we ask you to increase in us faith, hope, and love, and so that we may obtain what you have promised, make us to love what you command, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and rules with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we'll have our reading of the epistle. A reading from St. Paul, sorry, a reading from St. Paul's epistle to the Galatians, the fifth chapter, beginning at the 16th verse. I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh, with its passions and desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our reading of the psalm. 
A reading from Psalm 95, beginning at the first verse. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful sound to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever, now and always. Amen. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter, beginning at the 11th verse. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers, who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God, with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return to give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. We'll continue with the Ancient Statement of the Christian Faith, the Nicene Creed, found on page 108. Page 108. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. And he was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in keeping with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remissionness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our prayer this week uh, from uh, our Book of Common Prayer comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, actually the 13th verse, about faith, hope, and love. And so Christians in the Western world on this Sunday of the year, this 14th Sunday after Trinity, for more than a thousand years, Christians have been praying throughout the world for 
an increase of faith, hope, and love. It comes at a good time because we're in the midst of many challenges, many conflicts, and much complaining. I don't know about you, but I feel like it is surrounding me. And I also feel a sense of becoming callous. That it's there, this need, this hurting, this suffering throughout the world and all around. I was going through Netflix uh, to find a movie to watch yesterday, and it seemed like every movie that was out there, well, almost every movie, was a dystopian end-of-the-world scenario. Well, I need more faith, more hope, and love of my life if I am going to be facing these challenges, conflicts, and complaining. Because what God wants for me, for you, is to cultivate compassion. To have that ability to recognize the suffering that others are going through, the conflicts that they're going through, the difficulties in their lives. So what did Jesus do? He touched the lives of those who were suffering, individuals, men and women who are struggling in their lives. And he brought hope and healing to them. If you remember Mother Teresa in dealing with the poorest of the poor in Calcutta, she was not trying to fix those endemic problems of the poor. What she wanted was for them to know God's love in the things that she would do as Jesus' disciple. She wanted them to know that they were loved by God before they died. In the midst of their poverty, in the midst of their loneliness, in the midst of their suffering and their struggles. And so if I'm going to follow Jesus as my Lord, I need to be bringing hope and healing, God's love to the hurting. And so I need to be praying for an increase of faith, hope, and love. I need to join in that prayer, that request to God from Christians, faithful Christians throughout the past 2,000 years. So that as I'm surrounded, feeling overwhelmed, perhaps feeling the challenges, the conflicts, and doing the complaining in my own life, I need to grasp hold of what we heard in Jeremiah 29 is that we have a hope and a future given by God to us. And so that's my prayer this week. I hope it will be your prayer during this week. From morning through night, each and every day, and as you meet each person this week. Well, to have that realized in our lives, one of the things I need to do is to, when there's a feeling of power, powerlessness, am I looking for God to change things? It may be in my life where I'm feeling powerless. It may be in the lives of those around you. When you're struggling to survive, 
and others are thriving, it's frustrating. When I or somebody else feels they don't have power to change, I need to be asking, am I turning to God, the one who can bring change for me, for you, for them? Remember, you have the inside track as Jesus' follower that is his purpose and intent that his will, his power might be made known in this world, that the love of God might be made known in this world. You are the women, the men of faith who turn to God and his power to bring it to those who feel powerless to change. Well, what does it say in the seventh chapter of Matthew? Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds and the one who knocks, it will be opened. We need to be having doors opened. And so we look to God for change to happen. Second, am I conscious of others feeling left behind? That seems to be a very common theme today. Individuals who borrowed for education and haven't gotten the return they expected. It's credit card bills that won't go away paying down the minimum. It's feeling left behind in housing, whether you're owning or renting. It requires a reordering. Starting to do things differently when things aren't working. Just don't keep doing them the same way if it's not working. It's true of retirement. It's true of the opportunities. It's true of equality. It's true of advantage. This week at morning prayer, we've been reading from Luke, and it's been about reordering. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. These things will be added to you. How? Seeking his kingdom, making that the priority, reordering by God's will, his kingdom, his desire for you. And in that, change can come about when we reorder our lives according to God's will and purpose. In the 12th chapter of Luke, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. What are you valuing this week? What is your priority? amongst all the conflicts, confusion, and complaining that's going on. Pray. Ask for an increase of hope to make a difference. Hope is God's remedy to feeling left behind. Hope opens doors. Opens hardened hearts. And then third, I need to see the unmet basic needs of others. Often, I feel like Anglican Relief and Development Fund is constantly asking for help, asking for money with every 
earthquake, famine, and flood. And that is their job. And it seems like it's never ending. What did Jesus say? You will have the poor with you always. You will have those difficulties to deal with. And so, no matter where I am, whether it's at work, at church, at home, there will be unmet needs. And what is God's expectation for me? It's hard for us to realize that we in here in the United States are the wealthiest 4% of the world. But compassion, cultivating compassion, isn't about feeling guilty, but to see things as God sees them to see human beings, persons, made in the image of God, and then acting where our life can touch those around us. I see a need more clearly when I see that person who is loved by God. And that's what we're praying for this week. Faith, hope, and love. To love others as God loves them. You don't have abundant uh, or endless resources. But we're to give out of the abundance that God gives to us. Paul said to the people, in the well-to-do metropolis of Ephesus. And he says there in Acts 20, In all things I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. We are going to become more like God, made, manifesting, being made in the image of God, when we too can give. It is God attribute to be generous in giving. Receiving, we all like that. It's in the giving that we recognize love in our families, in our spouses, with our friends. It's giving where love becomes manifest. We have to remember that it wasn't, it was something that always had to be cultivated. Even in the early church, cultivating compassion wasn't easy. And there was a complaint by the Hellenists, the Greeks who had become believers, rose against the Hebrew believers, that their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. They had to be reminded, encouraged, to reach forth their hands in love. Their carrying compassion, it was to be a demonstration of God's love. And amongst the conflict, confusion, frustration, and fear, anger, and anxiety, we can use what God desires to give to us, that increase of faith, hope, and love that our lives might reflect that love of God and touch the lives of those around us and find that we, in our giving, in seeing the people around us, bringing 
that hope and healing, that we manifest that love of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to offer ourselves because we need God's grace and help to receive that faith, hope, and love. And so here at the altar in the very everyday substance, substances of bread and wine, Christ becomes present in that liturgy that he instituted 2,000 years ago. His truly being present with us, that his grace and power might enter into our lives. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. Blessed are you, Lord God of creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, form that the, the earth work of him and man sanctify it, that it may be for us the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Blessed are you, Lord God of creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, sanctify it, that it may be for us the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. I'll wash my hands in incense, O oh Lord, that I might go in procession round your altar. Our prayer continues on the top of page 109. Page 109. All things come from you, O oh Lord. And of your own have we given you. Let us pray for Christ's holy church. Almighty and ever-living God, by your holy Apostle Paul, you have taught us to offer our prayers and requests and to give thanks for all people. In your mercy, we humbly ask you to receive our prayers and oblations, which we offer to your divine majesty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask you to continually inspire your entire church with the spirit of harmony, unity, and truth, and grant that all who confess your holy name may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, direct the hearts and thoughts of our leaders of government so that they may make wise decisions, administer justice, punish wrongdoers, and encourage right conduct and true religion. Give to all in authority, the President of the United States, the Governor of this state, the legislature, the leaders of our towns, villages, and communities which surround us, the wisdom and strength to know and to do your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, give your grace to all pastors, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially Ray and Walter, our bishops, and to every leader in our fellowship. May they show forth your true and living word by their life and teaching, by their right and faithful administration of your holy sacraments, and by the training and equipping your people for ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And to all your people, give your heavenly grace so that they may, with pure hearts and minds, hear and receive your holy word, truly serving you in right conduct and the holiness of life all the days of their life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we humbly ask you in your goodness, O Lord, to comfort, visit, relieve all those for whom we've been bidden to pray, especially those in need of your healing touch, especially Linda, Steve, Joey, Karen, Chelsea, Kurt, Suzanne, Timothy, Rick, Sarah, Judith, Jules, Casper, Jonathan, Carl, Diane, Ashley, Liz, Nelson, Steve, Jeanette, Tom, Kim, Jan, Chris, Alice, Maureen, Robert, Greg, Mary, Edward, and Nancy. For those who are aged and infirm, especially Betsy and Carl. For those in need of the strength and guidance of the Holy Spirit in their lives, more especially Pat, 
Suzanne, Keith, and their family, Rich, Kim, and her family, Bonnie Ray, Bob, Loretta, Angela, Jeff, Mo, Sean, Pat, Denise, and their family, Barb, and her family. Remember all those who are seeking employment, especially Philip and Joseph and all those who in this earthly life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, danger, distress, or any other difficulty, relieve and strengthen, help and deliver them by your mighty hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious and merciful Lord, who works all things together for the good of those who love you, we offer you our thanks for all the blessings you have granted to your people. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask your protection for all those serving in our armed forces, both at home and abroad, more especially Chris, Donnie, Taylor, and Justin. Surround them with your protection. Remember all those who are responding to the emergency needs of others in the wildfires and in the flooding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we all and we bless your holy name, O Lord, for all your servants who have died in the faith of Christ. Grant them grace to love and serve you forever. We would trust your mercy, all who have died, especially Jim. Give us grace to follow the good examples of those who have gone before us in the faith, so that with them we may be partakers of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, grant them eternal rest. May your everlasting light shine upon them. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate who lives and rules with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. Amen. You who truly and earnestly repent of your sins are in love and peace with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and by walking daily in his holy ways, draw near with faith. Make this holy sacrament to comfort you and make your humble confession to Almighty God devoutly need. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our many sins and wrongdoings which we have committed from time to time by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty. Just bringing your sorrow and anger upon us. We earnestly repent and from our hearts are sorry for all our wrongdoings Remembering them weighs heavily upon us. The burden of them is more than we can bear. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that from this time forward we may serve and please you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Here are the comforting words of our Savior to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that all who believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And hear the words of Paul the Apostle. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And John the Evangelist says, If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is fitting and right to do so. It is very fitting, right, and our duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim and magnify your glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory to you, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to you, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for you of your tender mercy gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel commanded to continue a perpetual memory of his most precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of your dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, your humble servants, do celebrate and make here before your divine majesty with these your holy gifts which we now offer to you, the memorial your Son has commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering to you most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits provided to us by the same. Merciful Father, we humbly ask you to hear us, and of your almighty goodness to bless and sanctify with your word and Holy Spirit these your gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire your fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly asking you to grant that, by the merits and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all your whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present to you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice to you, humbly asking you that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our many sins to offer to you any sacrifice, yet we humbly ask you to, to accept this our essential duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, are given all honor and glory, O Father Almighty, now and always. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our For Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercy. We are not worthy to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord who always has mercy upon his people. Therefore, gracious Lord, grant that we may eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and drink his blood, so that our sinful bodies and souls may be made clean by his body and be washed in his precious blood and that we may forever live in him and he in us.
Amen. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you, preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shed for you, preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you, and be thankful. Deck thyself, my soul, with gladness. Leave the gloomy haunts of sadness. Come into the daylight splendor. There with joy thy praises render. Unto him whose grace unbounded hath this wondrous banquet founded. High o'er all the heavens he reigneth, yet to dwell with thee he deigneth. Now I sink before thee lowly, filled with joy most deep and holy. As with trembling awe and wonder, on thy mighty works I ponder. How by mysteries surrounded, death no mortal ever sounded. None may dare to pierce unbidden secrets that with thee are hidden. Sun, who all my life dost brighten, light, who dost my soul enlighten, joy, the sweetest heart e'er knoweth, fount whence all my being floweth. At thy feet I cry, my maker, let me be a fit partaker of this blessed food from heaven, for our good thy glory given. Jesus, bread of life, I pray thee, let me gladly here obey thee. Never to my hurt invited, be thy love with love requited. From this banquet let me measure, Lord, how vast and deep its treasure. Through the gifts thou here dost give me, as thy guest in heaven receive me. Our prayer continues on the top of page 116. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, from our hearts we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, thereby assuring us of your favor and love, and that we are living members in the mystical body of your Son, the blessed fellowship of all faithful people, and that in the sacrifice and death of your Son we are heirs through hope of your eternal kingdom. Heavenly Father, we ask you to assist us with the help of your grace, so that we may continue in your holy fellowship and walk in every good work which you have prepared for us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit are given all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Jesus said to his disciples, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Recording stopped. <laughs>